In previous videos we've looked at the fact that we can attach a file to an email which is something outside of Outlook. We've also looked at the fact that you can attach items to an email and Outlook items. So we can attach to an email any particular contacts which are called V cards, virtual business cards or contact groups such as a group of trustees. We can also attach things like calendar appointments and we can also attach emails to an email. But what we can also do is under the insert tab in the ribbon where you see those two buttons repeated, we can also insert business cards. Now business cards is a separate button under insert, but if I go back to message, business card is also under attach item. What a business card is, is it's a picture. So I'm going back to the insert tab, I'm going to business card and I'm going to insert my business card. <laughs> When I click OK, I'm able to insert my business card. If not, I can go into other business cards and go and get it if it's since moved, and I think I did move it. So I'm going to go OK and insert my business card through that other option. Now it will be listed under here, and I can insert it easily whenever I create an email simply by going to business card and Cathy. What it does is it basically attaches your business card as a picture, as you can see here, but it also attaches your business card as an attachment, um, which is a VCF file, which is a virtual business card, which is a virtual contact. I can delete the picture and I can remove one of these attachments by right clicking. So I've got a picture and I've got my contact V card. I can also attach somebody else's card. So I could hit the drop down again, go other business cards again and choose somebody else. So I might choose Leanne and go OK. It's also attached her contact V card and it's also attached a picture of her business card. Again, I could delete the picture and get left with the contact card. So a business card is a picture of the contact you created plus it attaches the actual V card or contact Outlook item. In addition to business cards, let me just delete this one, you can also attach or insert, I should say, a calendar. If I go into calendar, I have the option of choosing which calendar I'd like to use. It defaults to my own, but I do get other calendars. I can also choose today, tomorrow, or whatever date range I prefer, so I'm going to choose specify dates. I might like to insert my calendar perhaps for next week, the 17th through to the 21st, the week Monday to Friday. I can then specify if I show them availability only or whether I actually give them limited details of where I'll be or full details about where I'll be and what I'm up to. So of the three, I'm going to go for availability only. I can also show time only within my working hours, so I can choose that option if you want. And I can even go here and set my working hours, which if I click it and check, it believes on this machine I'm 9 till 5, Monday to Friday. Um, so that's what it will show. Um, I can even go into show and ask for other details, such as what sort of layout I'm after. But I'm just going to go with the default, so I'll hide that. So the idea is you can insert a calendar which says when you're free or busy for a certain date range. And it might help somebody if they contact you and say, have you got any time next week? Rather than have to type when you're free next week, you can insert a calendar and they can see when you're free. So I'll go OK. Here it shows me for that week, um, my calendar using this legend, busy, out of the office, tentative or free. And is basically saying I'm busy next week from 9 to 12, it's free from 10 to 5, and so on and so forth. And it'll go through telling them times that I'm free and busy. From there, they'll be able to email back and say, cool, I can see that you're free the morning of Friday, can I book you from 9 to 1? And that'll be great. Not only does it insert the calendar into the email, but it also attaches it as an ICS file, which is an internet calendar file. So they could actually double click that and they could look at that particular date range. And that's what would appear. And I can then close that. So it's very handy to be able to insert a calendar as well as insert business cards and these are options slowly we're working through on the insert tab. 
You can also insert signatures and switch between signatures, which we looked at in an earlier video. So I can right click and maybe switch to my disclaimer only signature or right click and choose my software solution signature. So you can easily switch a signature. Um, I might go undo, undo, undo several times on my quick access toolbar to remove those items to then show you that you can insert also tables. If I click the table button, I simply roll my mouse across and down however many columns and however many rows I'd like. If I decide I want a 4x4, four four, I'll simply choose 4x4 four four and then click. And so I've inserted a table. And from there I can enter figures or data that's best arranged in a table format. And simply move forward using tab and backwards using shift tab. You can easily format the table using a gallery of styles. You can even apply your own shading using the shading button and you can apply your own borders using the borders styles and the borders button. And simply present information in a rows and column very organized table format. You can also, on the Insert tab, insert pictures. You don't have to attach pictures as such. If I insert pictures, I then can choose from pictures that I have. So I'm going to choose pictures and I'll just choose some sample pictures. I might just grab this one and then just grab a picture such as penguins and insert the penguins. When I insert the picture, um, and I am clicked on the picture, I acquire Picture Tools tab in my ribbon. <clears throat> the Picture Tools tab will allow me to adjust perhaps the height of the picture, which for me at the moment is 20.32. I might change that to perhaps 8 and enter. <clears throat> it's now 8 centimetres high and proportionally it's made at 10.67 centimetres wide. So you can easily click and insert a picture and put your picture inside of your email. If I grab waterfall, just double click, I can then adjust the height of it to say 7. And so now this picture is 7 centimetres high and proportionally it's 9.35 centimetres wide. It's also a good idea to perhaps compress pictures before you email them. So I'll click the compress pictures button. It says you want to apply it only to this picture. I'll untick that option so it applies the compression to all pictures. I want to perhaps use the email option, which is 96 points per inch. Um, the higher PPI, the better the quality of the picture. Um, so you may even go for print quality and OK. But that will reduce the size of your email a little bit, depending on what you choose. And there are all sorts of options there as far as what you can do to manipulate pictures, such as applying a picture style, um, now I've got a, a shadow around it, now I've got a soft edging, now I've got a black frame. So you simply roll over the pictures and choose a particular style that you would like to apply to that picture. You can examine and explore picture borders, picture effects and layouts using these buttons. You've always got the option to undo if something goes wrong. You can hit undo. Typically you should get 100 levels of undo. So just keep pressing undo until it takes you back to a place that you're happy with and then try something else. You've also got the option of colour, which if you roll around it, you can ask for a grey scale or sepia or even different shades of colours. So I'll go for grey scale. Corrections is the sharpness and the brightness and the contrast of your picture, so I might sharpen it by 50%. Artistic effects allows you to apply effects such as a line drawing or a pencil grayscale, and it, it applies an artistic effect to this particular image. So I'll go for a pencil grayscale, and it looks like I actually drew those pencils in black and white or grayscale. If I then want to change the picture, I can swap it out with a different picture. 
and if I completely screw up the picture, I can reset the picture, including the size or not including the size, and I'll reset the picture to its original look. If I want to remove the background, I'll click the Remove Background button, and I simply mark areas to keep. Those areas that are magenta will be lost, so I'll click the back of this penguin's neck, maybe drag until I get the neck back. I'll click the beak, so I get his beak back, and the top of his beak. I'll also get his shoulder, and that will probably do. So then I keep the changes, and it's removed the background from my penguins. So you can remove the background, correct the sharpness and contrast, change the colour, artistic effects, compress it, change the picture, reset the picture, apply styles. You can also crop the picture, which is to take off excess space around the outside of the picture. So I'll click the crop button and then I'll drag these rather unusual black handles in and I will crop off part of the picture because I don't need all that stuff. So the stuff around the outside will effectively be removed. And so I've cropped it. If I compress the pictures again, delete the cropped areas, yes. Apply it to all the pictures, yes. And print quality, OK. And so that now um, has been manipulated. So you can insert pictures. Now the other thing you can do is you can insert, um, if I go back to the insert tab, pictures from an online source. So if you require a picture, say, of the Eiffel Tower and you don't have one because you haven't recently been there, you could type Eiffel Tower and it would find a picture of the Eiffel Tower and you could then tick it and you could therefore insert it. So you've got that option as well. You can also insert shapes. If you have icons, you could insert icons. Um, that's an extra little add-in. Um, you can also insert things like smart art, which is basically diagrams. Um, so if you have to create an organization chart, for example, that sort of thing. And you can also insert charts if you want to create a chart. Um, but I would simply copy and paste it from Excel. And you can also insert screenshots. If I was to click screenshot, any available windows in the background, it would show me. And so if I wanted to insert a picture in the background of the Skype screen I've got open, I could click that and it would insert that screenshot into my email. And under insert, you've also got the ability to insert a link. Now the idea with the link, a link is a hyperlink. So the idea here is sometimes we don't want to attach a file. We want to send them a link that they can click and it will take them to where that file is. That way we don't create multiple versions or copies of a file. And some files are too large and some files we shouldn't for reasons of privacy or, or, or sensitivity. We shouldn't insert. So what you can do is you can click link and you can insert a link. And you can basically browse for a file that you want to give them a link to. So if I decided I wanted to give them a link to a certain file that was on the C drive. Actually, I'll go back up. Maybe this tenancy document. And I'll just put some text. Click to view tenancy letter. Oops. When they click to view the tenancy letter, it will take them to this location. So the thing to remember is that when they click that link, is it possible physically for them to go to that link? So typically you would put it somewhere on a shared location or somewhere where they could actually click it and it would go there. No point in giving them a link to your desktop because they won't be able to get to your desktop. So be mindful about where that link is. And then when they click it, or in this case it says hold the control and click, when they hold the control and click, they'll be taken to that website or that network location or that shared location where that file is stored and they'll be able to see it and work with it rather than attaching the file.